Hello innovators and welcome back. Today we will discuss some of the electricity basics and do some fun exercise, so stay with us. You might think what is the world made of? Everything you see around you is made of matter. The desk, the paper, the computer, even yourself. Matter is something that has mass and takes up space. It can be found in three states, solid as an ice, liquid as a water and gas as a water vapor. You might ask, but what is the matter made of? Elements. Elements such as oxygen, carbon, gold or silver. There are approximately 104 different known elements in the universe. Now let's dig a little bit more. The next question, what are the elements made of? Each element is made of atoms. Atoms have a central core filled with positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons. Surrounding the core in several orbits are negatively charged particles called electrons. All atoms are arranged in the same way. The only important difference is the number of protons and electrons each atom has. For example, hydrogen has one electron while gold has 39. Finally, we are here. Let's take a look on the picture on the left. It shows the simplest electric circuit made of battery, connecting wires and a lamp. What actually happens? In the negative side of the battery, there are millions of electrons in excess. And in the positive side of the battery, there are a lack of electrons. Therefore, electrons flow from negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal, passing through the lamp. This flow of electrons is called electric current and causes the lamp to light up. What is current, resistance and voltage? The problem of electrons is that you cannot see them, so you just have to imagine how they do things. You like to think of electrons as the little balls flowing through pipes, even though it's not a very academic explanation, but it's good for now. Current, rather like the current in the river, is measured by counting how many balls pass certain point per second. More balls passing per second, the higher the current is. Resistance is the opposite to the current flow. We often need resistance to control current flow, so we use resistors for the job. They reduce the amount of charge that can pass by a point. And it doesn't matter which point you measure. A, B, or even C, because if you look upstream of the resistor, the charge is hanging around, waiting to move to the resistor. So let's see how a resistor works. We'll take a look on a basic electric circuit made of battery, resistor, lamp, and connecting wires. We'll start to increase the amount of the resistor in our case from 1 to 10 units, the movement of ailerons is slowing down, causing the lamp to light less bright. In the other case, when we decrease the amount of the resistor, the current passing through the lamp is higher and the lamp lights brighter. Finally, we say, the smaller the resistor is, the higher the current is. Piece of cake, right? And the last piece of the puzzle, what is voltage? If we persist with the water in a river analogy, then voltage is the altitude difference between two points along the river. This analogy helps us with the concept of voltage being relative. It doesn't matter if the river is falling from 1000 to 500 feet or from 500 to a zero. The drop will be the same, so will be the voltage. In the end, we say, the higher the voltage is, the lamp will light brighter. And of course, the higher the voltage is, the higher the current is. This is all for today, innovators. Hope you like it. Next time, we will talk about programming basics, so stay tuned. See ya!